Chapter Eight of the Tale of Buster Bumblebee. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dion Gines. The Tale of Buster Bumblebee by Arthur Scott Bailey. Chapter Eight. Buster the Boaster. As far back as Buster Bumblebee could remember, he had heard about the robber fly even the fiercest fighters among the workers spoke his name with great awe and from everything buster could learn his family had good reason to fear that dreadful enemy when buster first left the house to make excursions to the flower garden and the clover field he had felt quite uneasy he half expected that the robber fly would pop out from behind a blossom at any moment and pounce upon him for the robber fly was a bold bad villain and those that were so unfortunate as to find themselves caught by him and held fast in his long spiny feet had only a very slight chance of getting away from him no one of the bumblebee family knew where the robber fly lived but it was said that he often lurked on the ground watching for victims and when he spied one he would fly quickly up with a loud buzz and dart upon the unfortunate he had big keen eyes which enabled him to see very clearly and he had long narrow wings which bore him through the air with great swiftness and he had worst of all a sharp piercing beak which was most frightful to gaze upon now in spite of his name the robber fly looked like no fly that was ever seen in pleasant valley strange as it may seem in spite of his cruel beak his long wings and his spiny feet he looked not a little as if he might have been a near relation of buster bumblebee of course any member of the bumblebee family would have known at a glance that he was not one of them but probably johnny green if he had noticed him would have thought that robber fly was some sort of bumblebee since this monster was known to appear now and then in the neighborhood one can easily understand why buster bumblebee was a bit timid when he first began to venture abroad alone but as time passed his dread of meeting the robber fly gradually faded not only had nobody seen the robber for a long while but some began to say that they thought he must have met with an accident or perhaps he had moved to other parts and they didn't believe he would ever be heard of again and buster himself began to boast that he wasn't afraid of the robber fly and said that he was sorry that the robber had gone away before he had had a chance to see him buster's mother the queen happened to hear her son make that remark one day and she promptly told him that he was a stupid silly boaster if you knew what happened to your poor father last fall you would never want even to hear the robber fly's name mentioned again the queen declared as a shiver or a shudder or both passed up and down her royal back but buster bumblebee being very young and somewhat stupid as well said oh nonsense under his breath so low that his mother the queen could not hear him End of chapter 8, Buster the Boaster, recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah.